screen uh, just a second. I hope my screen is visible now. Yes, sir. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, welcome you all. Uh, good morning. Uh, so, continuing where we left off yesterday. So, our uh, agenda for day two will be uh, we'll be discussing about content writing round and uh, um, in slash with that presentation rounds uh, because some of the company prefer content writing. Uh, content writing can be renamed as essay writing as well. They'll ask you to write an essay on the topic that might, you know, differ by the name. But uh, strategies would be almost same, and some, some companies might take presentation also. These uh, are the rounds which are preferred at uh, some of the higher level. But some of the company do prefer to you know have presentation round at the uh, beginner level as well. So we'll also discuss some of the points what you should keep in mind while applying. So see again, these are the things which are not just uh, confined to the uh, campus recruitment, right? You might apply outside as well, apart from campus off campus placement. So of in off comp campus placement, if you apply for any company, you might find some of the new rounds or some of the new, uh, you know, uh, techniques to shortlist. So there you may encounter this kind of rounds like presentation round. Uh, and at the end, we will discuss about make your efforts count that uh, that is the interview round. How you should uh, be preparing yourself for the interview that you are going to face. What are the things that you need to keep in mind? uh what are the you know some of the tips that you should remember how to answer them what not to answer and uh, you know how to get a good flow while uh, be in an interview right so we'll be discussing that so many uh, without any further delay our first topic is content writing for the day and uh, along with that only i'll be discussing presentation round guide as well along with uh, that uh so yeah uh, first, let us uh, deep dive into what is content writing or what is essay writing, and why does company, you know, uh, take these rounds to shortlist students? So, first stage would be, as I mentioned, would be aptitude round. Uh, second stage might be group discussions, uh, and third stage, you know, third stage, uh, they want to still, uh, you know, filter out more students, so they might take the essay writing round. So, companies like Exxon Mobil uh, do prefer, you know, essay writing uh, rounds. So why they are taking that round? They are taking that round in order to check your uh, uh, like how you are uh, you know expressing yourself within given limit of time. What are your uh, thoughts? How you are framing your thoughts? How you are putting your thoughts in order in a very given specific time on a random topic? So it just take uh, it just tests your uh, you know accuracy. It just tests your thought process. It just tests your writing skills, your vocabulary. So you know. They are testing each and every skill in each and every round and accordingly, you know, they are filtering out. So content writing is very much important. You might encounter, you know, this round in any of the process. And uh, uh, yeah, the main uh, aspect here is the time limit that is given to you to write that content and what you can write or how you can strategize. These are two main important points that you have to remember while attending this round. So let us go to all the points that I mentioned on uh, this slide. First, we'll discuss about content writing and then we'll discuss about presentation. So first point, as you can see, start with a good quote adhering to the given topic. So before that, I would like to mention that, see, content writing is not like uh, the company will ask you to write content and submit it later on. No, you will be asked to write on a random topic that is given by them within specific limit of time, let's say 20 minutes. You will be given a 20 minutes and topic will be given you before the timer starts and you just have to write within that 20 minutes you have to gather your thoughts you have to frame it you have to format it everything you have to complete it and submit it at the end of the 20th minute before 20th minute so this is just an example i'm giving of the time but mostly time limit would be this only 15 20 25 max you will not be given more amount of time plus you will not get time to search you will not be uh, using google or anything uh, the camera like if it is online if it is happening online the camera will be right on you you will be asked to write a uh, content in your email you know and email ids will be given to you priorly so you just have to just be ready with your gmail screen like you have to uh, mention the two cc subject everything as soon as you are given the topic you just have to start writing in the mail format like you don't have to write the mail but you have to write that content in in that email box right because 
you will be submitting that content to that uh, you know uh, the moderators or the person who are judging you so in that 20 minutes you have to complete all the writing you cannot search anything you can you do not get time to even think it is up to you if you want to take time to think it is up to you but there is no specific time like you get in gd right that you get one minute or one and a half minute to think or search or do anything you want that here you don't get that privilege as well so now you now you will think that then how to you know age this like like how can i prepare myself for such situations right so that's why i have gathered this point that will help you, you to uh, you know clarify that how you can prepare it if any company is conducted in this round then and then only you should prepare and give your time to this otherwise as i mentioned aptitude will be taken by most of the companies so invest your time there right so if you priorly know that company is going to take this round then start the preparation for this also uh so apart from the time limit i have also told you how and uh, what is the process uh, in which they will conduct this round so uh, yeah let us start so how you should uh, address this so start with a good quote adhering to the given topic so initially what happens is uh, uh, on the first not the topic will come to you randomly so on the first not if the topic is very favorable to you then it's fine you will you know just keep on writing keep on writing because we already have the you know typing habit on whatsapp or messages or anywhere so our speed is there but you also have to uh, gain that typing speed on laptop or computer because this round will be on the laptop or computer so that also matters so your hands will you know automatically run and you will be able to write a lot of things about that topic but if topic is unknown to you then you know it's an issue or then it's a very big challenge for you that in that specific given amount of time how and what you will do so these are the strategies so first what you should do is start with a good quote adhering to the given topic so if you are able to remember something you know related to that particular topic a quote it is not necessary that you mention a quote you know that is quoted by someone you can prepare your own quote as well you can prepare a slogan you can prepare anything that is adhering to that given topic and not something randomly right that is the first strategy or first good thing that you can do that will give good impression to the reader that is uh, starting with a good quote adhering to that given topic second is divide this section into three parts introduction body and conclusion right so you by doing this your mind will get you know more clarification okay i have to write something in intro introduction i have to write something in body and i have write something i have to write something in conclusion so whatever ideas and thoughts you are getting in your mind bifurcate in this manner so that you know you can just write it out right uh, so in introduction what you will do you will try to introduce the topic which is there in just few lines like 3 to 4 lines maximum uh, yeah also remember that you have to adhere to the word limit that is given to you you have to take care of time as well as you have to take care of the word limit that is given to you you cannot cross that word limit if you cross it it will be considered to be disqualified because you are not adhering to the rules and regulations that they have given right so each and everything you have to follow and time limit is also a very important thing if you are being late yeah if there are any emergency issues or if there are any some connection errors that might have happened then it's fine they might give you some relaxations but if you are crossing the time limit and not submitting then also you will be disqualified so you have to take care of word limit you have to take care of time limit as well third thing is a good slogan or fact can be used to end the write up so whenever you complete this introduction body and conclusion try to again write a slogan or try to write a fact or try to write a figure if you know anything you know approximate figure so try to write that so why i am asking you to do that is that will give a good impression to the reader that this person is following this topic this person know the facts about it he knows about uh, you know figures everything so it will create a good impact on the readers mind so that is again a good point to mention next is mention factual points then writing a story do not write a story you don't have to write that this was that this happened uh, so then this happened no don't try to create a story in terms of like Eng english language when we do storytelling no this is a kind of factual writing this is a very contained writing that you do where you have to mention the facts where you men where you have to mention the practicality not dreams right so mention factual points then writing a story right so you have to be very careful of what you are writing in that 
uh, then comes include the examples from the current affairs as i mentioned you can uh, include something from recent times so let's say the topic of the essay writing or uh, the content writing is uh, uh, um, let's say ipl versus uh, the international cricket okay this is the topic then uh, you should be you know able to gather some thoughts around what is happening in current times and try to mention those things there right so that will give a good impression to so try to include examples from the current affairs another one point if there is any uh, environmental topic or let's say topic on global warming and if you are a you know environment freak and you are reading uh, you know the bp energy outlook report and you are following uh, such kind of blogs and news and if you are able to remember some figures you know that 24% carbon or uh, 24% carbon footprint to be uh, you know attained by 2025 so if you remember such kind of thoughts and uh, such kind of figures and if they are true then you can definitely mention it and also give this source that you know from where you are referring that uh, figures so that will be a very good uh, you know add to your content again uh next is due to time constraints just write phrases initially if not able to frame sentences so as i mentioned if topic is known to you then no issues you will be able to write but if you are not able to gather thoughts on the topic that is not known to you then what you do you just write words whatever is coming in your mind just write it out just put it there then you try to frame sentences and you know ultimately at the end you will have at least something to submit so that is also a strategy that you should keep in mind write phrases first and then try to frame sentences accordingly <clears throat> another point i would like to mention there do not form long long sentences try to keep your sentences short that is considered to be reader friendly if you write stories or if you write long sentences by connecting and so but whenever whatever then you know that do not create a very good that is not a good point i would say you know try to keep your sentences short and try to tell what you want to say in in a crisp manner okay adhere to the word limit also you should know when to you know uh, end the paragraph when to start the paragraph right so these things also you have to keep in mind uh, adhere to the word limit as i mentioned so as soon as you will start typing uh, and the uh, at the below portion of the gmail you will be able to see you know the words a uh, number of words that you are writing so that will you know give you an indication that whatever the word limit is given to you is reached or not use simple words and format do not try to exaggerate your content you know in order to uh, like we sometimes we think that you know let me write something unique i want to just present my thing my uh, you know topic in unique manner in in that in following that way or in following that path sometimes what we do we exaggerate uh, means something is not relevant we try to mention that also so be very conscious when you are writing so try to use simple words and format if you know complex words or if you know complex terms in english then it's good to use but think whether it can be used or not right not just to mention that you know more terms and you are mentioning it and there is no relevance it will create a bad impact if you know where to use that particular word then and then only use and if you are using it at a correct place it's a very good point plus point i would say okay uh then coming towards the yeah most important thing avoid spelling and grammatical mistakes so when you will submit your content to the uh, reader or when you will submit to your content to the moderator or judge who are judging you first and foremost thing that they will see is this only that whether you have made spelling mistakes or grammatical mistakes in your content or not so the number of spelling and number of grammatical mistakes that you are doing that you know just reduce your points or reduce your chances first and foremost thing is spelling and grammatical mistakes use of proper punctuations like comma full stop uh, the correct use of verb correct use of sentence framing so these are very basic things but you know within given a short period of time anybody would make mistakes so you have to try to you know reduce the number of mistakes like spelling or grammatical mistakes in that time limit right it can be me also it can be you or it can be some expert also if if somebody is asked to write something in in 15 minutes definitely mistakes will be there but what you have to try you have to try to avoid it and how you will be able to avoid it by practicing it so how to practice that also i'll let you know uh spend more time on the body section so as i mentioned introduction and conclusion are also very important they are very important that how you are starting and how you are ending 
but readers mind would be you know more focused on the body part what actually you have put in there right so try to create a body in that way ki every points are covered you know almost everything is getting covered or whatever you are knowing is getting covered and try to create a flow okay that uh, if you are explaining something try to create a flow so that it can be easily understood by the reader and don't try to jumble up things or mix up things you have mentioned something here then if uh, if something you, that you have mentioned is completed it's completed do not try to mention it again you know uh, repeatedly so avoid repetition as well so these are the you know very very key points that you should keep in mind before you uh, attempt the content writing round now let me come to the strategy which i used uh, to you know to prepare uh, for this round at the time of uh, my exon mobile recruitment at the time of uh, our recruitment process so me uh, and my one of my friend what we used to do is we again consulted one of the faculty mentor you know that used to judge it you definitely need someone you know who can tell your mistakes right so we can uh, like consulted a uh, faculty mentor so what we used to do is we kept a specific time in a day that at this time we will start writing topics so at every night at 9 pm what we used to do we ask the faculty mentor to give us a random topic you know on the spot and then we take time of 20 minutes like from 9 to 920 we write email you know completely on that topic and at the end of 20th minute we'll send it to our faculty mentor right so uh, we practice this around 8 to 9 times on random 8 to 9 topics and after we submit it to our uh, uh, faculty mentor on the next day in the morning she used to give us you know the review of how how we have written uh, what mistakes we are doing also me and my friend used to discuss it face to face also like it was a covid time so i mean to say in calls that uh, what i felt about whatever he has written what are the five positive points and what are the five negative points and similarly he do that for me so in that way we we were able to ex, uh, you know assess our mistakes uh, we were able to improve our mistakes and accordingly we were applying those corrections in our next coming uh, write ups that we were doing so by practicing it eight to nine times on random topic by consulting faculty mentor and consulting each other as well helped me to you know clear my content writing round in a very good manner because the topic which came uh, it was something you know that uh, was in my mind so yeah it helped me to create the uh, i mean say it helped me to go, go through that content writing round so uh, yeah as a ceo i have mentioned that you have to keep you know eye on the timer the timer would be you know at the bottom of your screen if it's online on the clock so try to maintain the time and uh, preferred for uh, format would be gmail that will this is again depends on the company in what form they want they want in word format they want in mails anything so this depends on them do not copy anything okay do not copy you will be caught definitely you will be caught because they have uh, software in which they will access your content so if you are try to copy as well like you will think let me open google how they will be able to know and you will just copy paste or try to reframe it they have very strong softwares in which they will uh, you know just uh, make your content copy paste there and they will be able to know if you have copied or not so do not try to copy you will be caught uh, keep reading the current affairs as i mentioned for group discussions as well for content writing as well read the current affairs go through the news go through what is happening around the world what is happening in india what is happening in sports what is happening in uh, politics like generally political uh, topics are not there but on in a generalized manner you know it can be asked so what are the current affairs like uh, the hot topic can be the launching of chandrayaan 3 or you know the topics surrounding that so you should be able you should know about it because any topic can come around uh, you know that part uh, so i yeah, read the current affairs because there are high chances that topic might come from you know the current affairs uh yes so this was all about content writing so let us take some questions if you have then we can move to presentation part any questions guys you can type as well please
okay i guess uh, no questions so can we move ahead yes sir okay sure okay uh, so see whatever points i have given to you up till now are also applicable to powerpoint or uh, the presentation round but generally presentations won't be asked you know to prepare on this spot you will be given a certain amount of time like one day or 24 hours to pre uh, to prepare your presentation and then submit it and then present it right so that is the process for presentation round so also again on the topic part you should follow the current affairs and the recent topics because topic might come from there as well topic might come from the technical part as well that you may ask uh, you may be asked to prepare a presentation on uh, material balance or let's say you may ask uh, you may be asked to prepare a presentation on uh, uh, different kind of logs and uh, explain their uses or uh, you know how to read the log right so this can be the topics as well as per the company's requirement or job descriptions so you should be you know able to be prepared for it but con for content writing generally technical topics would want to be there topics would be from you know non technical part only in content writing most probably okay. so yeah for uh, presentation uh, either to again the rules that are given to you either to the format that is given to you if company is asking you to prepare four slides please stick to four slides only do not try to put introduction do not try to put thank you slide or uh, any other slides if four means four you have to stay either to that rule strictly so please maintain that uh, you know while you are pres uh, preparing your presentation second point do not put so much of content like currently i am explaining you that's why i put up so much of content you might have seen yesterday also uh, because i am not giving any you know uh, professional or technical presentation right now this is just to explain you guys so that's why uh, it depends you know on the type of events but in the company presentation or in the presentation round uh, what i will suggest is do not put much content on your uh, ppt only put phrases if you see like as you can see on the screen i have put just phrases and i am explaining them so try to do that do not mention everything on ppt you know and you just keep on reading them and uh, inter uh, the reader or i would say the judge might feel boring as well at a time that you know you are just mentioning text 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 and nothing else right so try to use this kind of objects try to present it in a unique way try to uh, you know put things in the phrases manner so that it can be easily understood and you know the reader will also get interest you know that he has mentioned something important and it's you know very good to read i am able to read it i am liking it by seeing it so first impression is last, last impression so uh yeah keep up with the format keep up with the slide number limit that is given to you uh try to use different objects as i mentioned do not put much text and when you are presenting your presentation also do not uh you know rephrase or stories do not make stories try to explain straight on to the point so yeah you can use different kind of graphs pie charts analysis or you know any kind of facts to explain your topic which is given to you and uh, also refrain from copying it from internet again that directly you are just copying the definition and putting in there no do not do that try to frame your own sentence or try to frame your own definition obviously if you are using it do not forget to mention references it is also very important part when you are making your presentation do not put anything without reference that can uh, you know make a copyright issue for you and you can be questioned in the presentation only that from where you have uh, you know uh, taken this definition and if you tell that no sir i have uh, or no ma'am i have uh, you know rephrased it myself and i put it so he if he knows from where it is taken he will call, he will catch you right so refrain from doing that and if you are mentioning mention reference at the bottom of this slide or at the end of this slide now uh, if it is a technical presentation try to create flow charts as you can see on my screen try to create a flow charts or step charts or process charts so that you know they can easily understand okay first you did this second you did this third you did this fourth you did this instead of writing in sentences right it is very much uh, i would say it is uh, 
uh, you know, good, very good to uh, show your topic or to present your topic in a way of flow, you know, one after other, second after other, third, fourth, fifth, right, in that way. So on the first slide, again, either to the format that is given to you that on the first slide, if you are asked to put introduction, then only put introduction, do not put anything else. If you are asked to put uh, the techniques and procedures on the second page, then only add that only. Do not try to add anything else. And on the third slide, there might be conclusion or result. And on the fourth slide, uh, you know, you might be asked to present some case studies as well. So you have to put that. Right? So please keep this in mind. Try to use different kind of charts for your analysis. Try to use different kind of objects, process flow diagrams, and those things that will make your PPT a wonderful one. So first impression would be good that you know how to prepare presentations because in company, when you go in company, you will be asked to prepare a lot of presentations and you will also be asked to present it in front of thousand uh, hundred number of people or thousand number of people, right? So if your presentation is good, it creates a very good impression that this guy or this person knows how to prepare a good presentation. First thing. Second thing is when you are presenting it, how you are presenting it, right? That also depends. You just don't have to just go and speak, speak, speak. You have to take breaks in between. You have to cut your sentences. You should know how to and what to mention one after the other. So that uh, what is the main thing is the reader or the moderator or the judge should get the clarity of, you know, what is asked and what you are mentioning. Simple, simple as that. So try to create our presentations like that. So. Uh, yes, this uh, concludes our first part and then we'll discuss about how to ace an interview. So before that, uh, let us take some questions. Anything guys? Yesterday, many people asked. So I guess there should be some questions from, from this round because this is something that you might not have heard as well, you know, about this mostly aptitude and interview. Everybody knows, but for content writing and presentation, very, you know, very few people might uh, would have these idea. Yeah, if you will not speak here, then uh, I will be able to speak in the interviews or, uh, you know, this kind of round. So yeah, speak up. I'm just encouraging you guys to speak up and ask something if uh, anything is there. I also need to know whether I am going good or not. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay. in campus placement this round will be there for any company so as i mentioned uh, it depends on the company how they want to you know conduct their interview process do they want to keep four rounds like uh, first uh, will be the cv screening second would be uh, uh, aptitude test third would be gd fourth will be content writing and then fifth will be interview so you might have to clear all these steps and have to reach the interview part so at every stage students you know will be getting eliminated and at the end only nine or ten students will remain at the initial part everybody everybody you know would be submitting their cv or might be able to give aptitude te test as well but at the interview process only you know few number of people will reach so people will get start getting eliminated from all these rounds so yeah, it depends on company how they want to conduct their process so as i know as far as my knowledge of my experience exxon mobile you know, took all of this five things I meant, uh, whatever I mentioned. Uh, I hope that answers push. Okay. Uh, sir, it is better to make a presentation which contains high resolution or is it to make a simple version which is to the point? Um, high resolution in the sense uh, if you can. Uh, Uh, if you can clarify to me what uh, what do you mean by high resolution here? You can speak up right one. Sir, I mean, presentation like uh, high five, I mean, uh, can we have a uh, slide? Lene ki 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 See, in the, in uh, 
no no uh, so yeah a good question that uh, can you use some other formats as well so as i mentioned if you are asked to uh, use the format which is given by the company you have to stick to that only you cannot use anything else second part if they are giving you the freedom that you know you can use any format then it is up to you what you want to take and from where you want to take but do not do extra as i mentioned do not exaggerate you know in order to give them simple idea so it is there but what i'll suggest is stick to powerpoint that is best you get everything on powerpoint you can use different kind of objects you can also use different kind of gifs if you guys don't know you can use gifs on your presentations so uh, it will not uh, run when you are in uh, creating it but when you will present it in the slide show mode it will run so you can use different kind of gifs as well so uh, many of you might be aware about of that famous slide in which uh, uh, in uh, well stimulation uh, that acidization process a uh, slide by ongc in which they are you know pumping the acid and everything is running so that is a kind of gif that they have created so you know if you have such kind of gifs do mention it it will be easy for you to explain them the process right and it it adds up to a very good quality of uh, features as well that you know you know what kind of uh, features are there in powerpoint so yeah i will prefer powerpoint before anything but you can definitely go at anywhere if it's you know favorable and preferable i hope that answers okay yeah yes uh, for presentation by presenting it how we can get attention towards the campus recruiter it should be good communication yeah so as i mentioned that both part are important what you are presenting what is the quality of presentation also is equally important because as i mentioned they are checking whether you are able to put content in a confined manner in a within given time limit uh, how you are able to you know create it or what is your creativity or how you are putting it so that is also tested along with the communication if you are good at communication it is good it is plus point add up point that you are able to convey something but if your presentation is not good then it is also a uh, you know down point for you so you have to equally maintain both right if you have created a high five presentation a very good one and if you are not able to speak then also it is of no use right so both things are equally important and as i mentioned do not mention everything on presentation keep something to speak only mention phrases when you are uh, speaking or when you are explaining it that time you mention those things to grab the attention of the recruiter as i mentioned somebody else is typing okay a simple language high knowledge work in presentation simple language high knowledge yes definitely good one that simple knowledge a simple language and high knowledge work in presentation good point yes definitely as i mentioned if you prepare something uh, very high five very good but if interviewer is not able to understand what you have put on then you know that is of no use again the major part which you are concentrating here is trying to grab the attention of the recruiter in the sense that whatever they have asked you to do you have done that at least you know at least you have done that and adding on to that you know you have done something extra you know which is your creativity or which is your thoughts which is your own uh, way of you know presenting or doing things so yeah that is what matters any more questions guys most probably again i'm not guaranteeing it but most probably uh, you might not face the presentation rounds in the campus recruitment companies mostly as i'm telling you, mostly you might face it but uh, yeah you can definitely expect aptitude group discussion and interview this three will be surely there why we are preparing for this as well that in case you know any company takes this takes this you should have idea so i thought to you know keep this as well in our uh, uh, today's talk so if there are no more questions we can take a 5 minute break and after that the whole time or whole session would be dedicated to interview only 
so in that i'll first you know give tips from my side will explain you from my side then for around half an hour or 20 minutes i will recommend you guys to ask me question not in the chat you have to ask you know in uh, by speaking only so that uh, is just you know you can consider as a start of your preparations maybe that you are how you are able to speak whether you are able to speak or not at all so i want to test that as well right so yeah so that is the flow of uh, the part 2 of day 2 i would say so let us take a 5 minute break does that work host yes sir uh, we, we we will take a 5 minutes break and we'll resume again uh, so we'll resume at 11:48 okay sharp 11:48 will be here because okay. i want uh, you know you guys to speak up or you guys to ask me whatever questions you have in mind whether it is from yesterday or whether it is from today as well be it any silly question as well i will definitely like to reply that as well that is very important because at when i was at your stage i would have also faced some kind of you know very silly question that i would have found that whether if i'll ask this uh, this will look good or not but do not hesitate just speak up just you know clarify it okay so let us meet at 1149 now okay see you guys okay sir
हेलो हेलो वेलकम बैक एवरीवन वी विल रिज्यूम यस सर ओके तो आई हैव स्टार्टेड द रिकॉर्डिंग यस इट इज स्टार्टेड ओके सो या लेट अस स्टार्ट सो विल ट्राई टू फिनिश इट बाय 12:30 यू नो एंड लाइक एवरीथिंग Okay, sir. Uh, is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so yeah, the final step uh, of our uh, you know whole hiring process that is an interview. How you will ace an interview? How you will prepare for it? Right? You have cleared all the rounds. You will be energized. you will be feeling good you will be in a good space that you know you are able to clarify all the round and now you are at the final stage so how to put uh, you know the final foot on the lever and how to just get through this round as well and uh, grab you know job at the earliest right that is important so yeah the i don't have any slides for interview why because as i mentioned this is something that we need to speak up or we need to discuss face to face right so i'll give you tips but i'll not be giving you any content or any written tips for this let us discuss right so uh yeah let us start from uh, how you will start to prepare for the interview so again say this depends on when the company wants to take your interview sometimes what happens aptitude test is taken one week back and after a week you know uh on the quick of succession on the same day only group discussion will happen then content writing will happen and then interview will also happen so you have to be ready for each and everything you have to you know just uh, click and start your mind according to that round you have to be do not feel pressurized you don't have to feel nervous you have to be very calm because you you know will be getting uh, the tests results test results again you have to sit for interview so everything will you know go into your mind very quickly and everything will just go past quickly so you have to be prepared for such situation that uh, interview might be taken on the same day as well or interview might be taken you know two days after or one day later or any time right so you have to be prepared that's what i want to mention here so how you prepare for your interview first and foremost thing in interview is you should be able to answer anything that is asked from your cv according to my perspective or according to my view around 70 to 75 percentage of your interview will be revolving around your cv only your cv only so each and every word mark my words each and every word not sentences each and every word that you have mentioned on cv should be clarified to you at least that you know whatever you have mentioned if anything asked from there you should be able to speak and that's why when we were discussing the cv round i told you that do not try to mention anything fake or do not try to mention anything which is not relevant or you haven't done because you will be caught because from anywhere anything can be asked from your cv so only put those things which you are comfortable which you are confident and which you are very much in peace if you are asked you will be able to answer them you know in a very good way so mm -hmm. first and foremost thing is prepare your cv thoroughly thoroughly prepare your cv right so now let us discuss from cv what kind of questions can be can come right so first is objective uh, so yeah first uh, question in the interview will be introduce yourself a very globally highly acknowledged question that will be definitely asked to you that introduce yourself so see uh, introduce yourself does not mean that uh, you have to introduce uh, and just tell about yourself and that uh, uh, what is your name from where you are coming what is your degree what uh, you know uh, like our parents are doing are they in profession are they doing business or those kind of things you are you will be they expect that you introduce yourself within 1.5 to 2 minutes max 2 minutes is maximum try to complete it in 1 minute or 1 and 1/2 minute so in that what you have to mention you just mention your name first obviously what currently degree you are pursuing they will be knowing this already that's why you have to just mention it very quickly 
what are your expertise right what you are good at that you can mention like you can mention some of the skills or your personal experience in a very short manner that uh, you know i've gone uh, i have learned cmg at irs and i have gained this 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 expertise and i desire or i aspire to learn more and uh, you know basically you have to try to show intent as well that you know you are really looking for that job in your introduction also try to mention your skills in your introduction part so first you'll mention about yourself in one or two lines from where you are do definitely mention from where you are because they might be interested in knowing from where you are and then they can ask you some questions about that place as well so try to mention this then uh, let me show you yeah so this is just an example okay uh this i'll come to you how and why to prepare this so first i have mentioned name and from where i am currently then you can mention your uh, current position at any student chapter if you are any so this will add up to your introduction only then you can mention about your internships in a very short form then you can mention about your uh, core competencies that you have see and you can also mention some of the one of the prominent achievement that you have that you are proud of you know that can give good uh, impact to the interviewers and then you have to show your you know urge or you have to show your thirst what you are looking for and what you want actually right that you can mention and in the last line you can mention that uh, uh, what actually you follow in life and what you are looking for you know right so this way you just have to complete your uh, you know tell me about yourself or introduce yourself in uh, five to six lines maximum okay so this is a very good strategy to prepare your first question that is asked to you then they will come to cv now in cv uh there might not be any questions from your educational part they might ask you know where did you study what did you study etc if they want to know more the main focus then will turn out to the projects part the project which you have done so they might ask you different questions from project that depends on you know whatever you have mentioned in your cv they might ask what kind of challenges did you face you know while you were doing this project uh if you mentioned certain terms like if you mentioned uh, uh, that uh, well testing or uh, in cbm wells then they will ask you that what did you learn uh, you know while doing this uh, then you will explain then then might be cross question on what you are mentioning them as well so be very careful in answering what you are speaking because cross questioning will be there right and you have to be ready you should be answerable in that way so for projects how you will prepare you would be having your own project report right and if you don't have your project report at least you will be having your project presentation that you you would have uh like uh, presented in your media review or uh, end year review right so you prepare that presentation completely and then accordingly you will be able to answer that right for projects part coming towards the internship part gain a very important from part from where you can expect majority of your technical questions majority of the technical questions will be coming from those internship portions which you have mentioned so that's why i was mentioning while uh, we were discussing about cv that only at relevant internships which you are confident at and which is you know again relevant to the job description that is given to you right so in that also your source your major source would be your internship report so now you understand from where the chain is starting where, where are you when you are in your internship you should be conscious that i have to prepare a good report so that i can refer this report at the time of my interview preparations so your internship report will help you a lot you know in order to get clarified so first and foremost thing is keep in mind what actually you have done right that should be clear to you what you have done in your internship and whatever you have mentioned the in the phrases also that is being covered also right that is also should be covered then you might be asked that okay you have done this uh, uh the uh, analysis exercise on let's say uh, energy plot or you have done an exercise on uh, finding out what kind of uh, reservoir drive mechanism is there so what was your approach this can be a question if you have used excel he will ask you that what kind of plots did you use okay so from plots what did you uh, you know judged or what did you concluded then my, there might be a question that uh, what kind of challenges did you faced during uh, by doing this then there might be some random questions that uh, uh, what do you mean by material balance what are the uh, uh, what we can say this assumptions of the material balance so you can expect some or around basic questions around that topic as well you know that are basic so this also might should be clear to you 
that whether whatever you mentioned in the internship is not confined to that but apart from that what is the basic knowledge about that topic that also should be cleared to you so you can expect such kind of technical questions if you mentioned artificial lift then they might ask you the first and foremost thing would be that what is the what are the criteria you know to select an artificial lift this will be the first question definitely then they might ask you that if there is a heavy oil reservoir if there is a high amount of uh, uh, fines are coming or if high amount of gas is coming this is the depth what kind of artificial lift do you suggest so you will be able to answer this only when you know the basics right so yeah uh, this is about the technical part or from the internship part the questions that can be uh, asked to you uh, after that you can expect questions from the skills that you are mentioned the softwares that you have mentioned uh, if if see in the job requirement or in the skills they have mentioned that they want someone that uh, should be having some amount of power bi knowledge or let's say excel knowledge so if you have mentioned ms excel you can expect ex, uh, questions from ms excel they might ask you that what kind of project or what kind have you done any work on ms excel then you can take example of in, if you have done any mini projects in your uh, you know semesters if you have used this excel in analysis in doing analysis during your internship so you can mention this parts right so whatever the part you have mentioned in the core competencies or in the skills part prepare an example priorly you know that if i am asked question about leadership these are the things that i will mention if i am asked the question about adaptiveness this is the thing that i will mention so prepare your own short story in the back of the mind and how you'll prepare it as i mentioned prepare your own questions you know these are see these are some of the basic general questions that can be asked so i prepared my questions on my myself only i did not copy it from anywhere i did not refer anything i just prepared my questions on my own see this is the second question what are your strengths and weaknesses so whatever the strengths of mine were there i mentioned it and against those strength what are my examples see examples are, will be same for you as well that you would have done rural internship so what is covered in rural internship rural internship covers leadership skill as well they it also covers presentation skill it also contains uh, team work it also contains adaptiveness good example to adaptiveness can be rural internship right because you are uh, you know put in the uh, very uh, remote areas and you are working right so you should uh, be ready with the examples of whatever you are mentioning then you also have to prepare your weakness as well okay so these are the basic questions so prepare your own answers priorly to the interviews right so this will help you to uh, like see this is written by you so you will be able to speak this very easily if you copy and try to remember it you will not be able to speak in you know uh, in in a realistic manner right so you would uh, have been the part of uh, student chapters so many of the skills will be attached to that also so you can give example of your you know student chapter experience if you have any if you have held any event if you have done any presentations so it is important to list this things down before you prepare for the interviews right so you can prepare this kind of document for yourself where you can write everything out whatever you have right and these are the basic question i'll share this with you so that this you know can, you can take this as a reference again i will suggest you and i will tell you to refrain from copying as it is in your part right you can refer it and try to prepare your own answers but do not copy paste that i'll just tell you right this can be a good question that why that company should hire you why that company right so for that you have to surf through their company website you have to think why you want to be part of their company question can be where do you see yourself 5 years so that should also be clear to you clear to you so these the questions which i am showing to you are a part of behavioral questions or hr questions the first part that i told to you were on technical part so interview can be different as well that they might take your technical interview first and behavioral interview after that you know both can be at a different times or else they can combine most probably it will be combined only that you know they will try to assess your technicals plus hr skills plus uh, soft skills plus analytical skills everything in the one interview so you can expect this hr questions in those interview as well and these are the basic hr questions like where do you see yourself 5 years after 5 years right so see i was not given any list of questions that these are the questions prepare your answer and speak these are some of the questions that i you know picked up from let's say from internet or from uh, my personal experience or uh, you know whatever the analysis that i have done that these are the basic questions that are most probable to come so 
you prepare you know uh, with the knowledge whatever you have right so tell me about yourself is must it will definitely come so you should be prepared with that if you are asked any questions randomly and if you have not prepared it then you will take time to think and ultimately you might not be able to answer them as well so that will create trouble for you so pre preparations are very much important right uh so after that as i mentioned we were just discussing uh, like we were taking cv as a reference and going one by one so on from what part you can expect questions what kind of questions right so we have discussed behavioral as well we have discussed softwares as well like uh, they if you mentioned cmg so you can expect questions like uh, what are the different uh, suits of cmg or what are the different kind of apps that are in cmg then you should be at least able to answer that uh, imax winprop or uh, you know different uh, stars gem these are the different kind of uh, suits that are in cmg then they might ask you ha okay have you worked on cmg then you can definitely mention yes i have worked on cmg i know about black hole simulator so this this is was the process and you can tell him right do not try to mention what you don't know simple otherwise they will catch you and if you if you are cross questioned on that then you will be in trouble okay uh uh i guess i have covered that point next would be keep a good smile on your face throughout the interview that shows uh, also maintain a good body posture so these are the points that i'm telling you that are pref uh, that are applicable to offline interview as well and online most probably your interview would be offline only because now covid has gone the term we had given the online interviews so yeah there are some advantages disadvantages with both of that but you prepare yourself for the offline interviews only so how you are walking into the uh, meeting room how you are greeting them how you are sitting on the chair what is your leg position what is your hand position uh, are your hands crossed are your hands on the table are your where are your legs how you are sitting how you are seeing them this every small 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 thing will matter you know in order to you get selected or not right so once you have taken your positions and everything and then you know the flow of interview will start once the flow once the interview will start you will not realize when it ends also you know like 40 50 minutes will go just like that so you just have to prepare for that 30 40 minutes and that 30 40 minutes will be good enough if you pre start preparing it you know uh, right before one or two months by preparing this kind of documents by you know improving yourself on your uh, mistakes that you are doing so keep up a good smile keep a good confidence on your face while answering uh, then it is uh, try to as i mentioned try to be very specific do not tell them stories right try to be very specific and answer them with clarity that uh, you know this one one of the most important point if you don't know the answer how to face it so if you are asked let's say uh, tell me what you will do in this situation like uh, these are the parameters these are the tools uh, this is the process and this is the situation let's say uh if you are asked uh, let's say take a question from drilling that uh, if you are asked if uh, kick comes what you will do like this is a basic question everybody will be knowing that what you will do but let's say if you don't know this so how you will address this so what you will try is if you know certain thing about it try to mention it do not try to answer if you know then mention it that is what i mean if you know then mention it of whatever you know rest you can tell that that sir uh, i am not able to recall it or i don't know tell them in a very you know fair way or tell them in a very light manner that uh, sir i am not able to recall it so that that will be a good impression instead of trying to answer it and creating a story or you know trying to mention something wrong that is not relevant as well that will create a bad impression refrain from doing that saying no sometimes is good right so try to do that uh sit straight in a comfortable manner as i told you peaceful environment uh, would be uh, uh, applicable there and yeah remember examples from your instances as i mentioned prepare your internships prepare your projects prepare your uh, you know during any, your college times you would be you would be encountering with lot many you know such other incidences as well so you know try to remember or try to connect your skills with them right so be prepared with all of this prior to the interview what you have to do on the day of interview just go through your hr questions just like you know normally just go through your hr questions which you have written normally do not try to mug up do not try to mug up your introduction do not try to mug up any answer right that will be you know very major breakdown if you don't remember it at the time when you are asked right so do not try to mug up your answers 
just read your answers and keep points in your mind and when you are asked you should be able to mention those points in a very sublime manner in a very good manner so try to speak on your own rather than mugging up the things right this is the one uh, mo most important point as well in that process and rest uh, yeah at the end of the interview if you are asked that uh, do you have any questions for us means interviewer will ask you that you have any questions for us so prepare some of the questions priorly only that if i am asked you know i will ask this question that is good rather than thinking there okay what i should ask and then telling them sir i am not i don't want to ask any that you know is it's not a good end so priorly prepare one or two questions priorly only about the company that you you may ask them that uh, okay if they are asking uh, do you have any questions for us then you can tell that uh, uh, yes sir i had one question in mind you know that was popping popping up or you can also take reference for, of your pre placement talk sir uh, so uh, like uh, some points were mentioned in the pre placement talk so can you tell me that uh, for this role are any field exposures or not or what kind of trainings you know are provided to the employer for taking up this role this two two can be very good questions right that they will also feel that you are interested in it do not ask for uh, you know just sake of asking if you are really feeling it from your inner side that you i really want to know about it you can ask them then they will be happy to answer it and uh, that will be end of the interview right again one more thing see it is not mandatory to ask them there only that uh, sir can you uh, tell me the review of my interview do not do that that will create a bad impression do not ask them at the end of the interview that sir how was my interview or uh, how did i perform what should i improve no do not ask them there that is not uh, recommended i would say right you will be able to know the answer afterwards or you might be given analysis afterwards as well or you may you know contact with the interviewer after you know your placement season let's say comes uh, comes to an end and if you are connected with him on linkedin then you can ask them sir uh, can you tell me some points where i can improve so you can you know stay connected with them so yeah these were the key strategies or uh, small small things that uh, you know you should be taking care uh, of while you are attending any of the uh, hiring process rounds so yeah that was it from my side i would like to thank iadc i would like to thank each and every member who you know came up to make this event happen i know the number of people were less attending this but i hope the recording is good and we'll be putting this on youtube as well so this can be accessible to you guys if you want to refer it again then also you it's good and if your friends want to you know again go through it you can share this with them as well i'll be again sharing you this presentation as well as the hr question sample hr questions list uh, you know that will help you to prepare certain things in a very good way and uh, i wish you all the very best uh, no interview is last for you okay life uh, this is not the end of the life so learn from your mistakes learn from your experiences rather than feeling bad about it that you know this happened this happened try to invest your time in improving yourself that's what i mentioned yesterday also and that that's what i followed uh, during my processes as well right so uh, yeah i am wishing you all the very best you all have equal chance nobody is you know up or nobody is down you all have equal chance now invest your uh, time in preparing at the best and grab the best of the opportunities that are lying in the industry yeah thank you so guys anyone have any questions you can write in the chat box yes uh, now the floor is open to you guys uh, i want you to come up with any questions that are there in your mind popping up uh, regarding interview or regarding any rounds that are there and mandatory things is you have to speak go ahead guys at least one question should have been there in your mind or if there are no any questions it means that you are completely prepared and uh, you will be able to ace hello sir okay good afternoon sir hello i would like to hi how are you sir yeah yes yes i am good i am good how are you doing i am doing good sir uh, got a very okay, good so... uh, you know opportunity to share these things with these guys who are going to yes, kick off yes. their placement season so yeah yes, uh, yes, at a very good time Yes, very, very true. Very true. 
uh, I mean, uh, I think many of you may be knowing, actually, Parad Borania is a first uh, IADC PDU student uh, chapter chairman. So we are so glad that uh, you could spare. You know, it's weekend. I know you might have, uh, have a tough, uh, I mean, weekday, and you could spare this time. And in fact, many of the students, they have come to me and various other faculties also with regard to writing a resume and all. So I think uh, you have come at the very right time because you carry a lot of experience. I mean, uh, with regard to, you know, you are just into the industry and you know that what the industry is actually, you know, wanting from uh, the youngsters. So it's it's really nice that uh, you have come. Thank you so much, Parag. Thank you so much, sir. It means a lot and uh, it's, uh, you know, again, a good feeling to connect with you. Uh, uh, the time is running so fast. You know, it has been two years uh, since I'm in industry now and I still feel that I'm a part of uh, university as well. So, yeah, any time up for it for students who are, you know, really looking for cracking this kind of uh, rounds or, uh, you know, uh, really want to achieve something good in life. So, yeah, as I told them, industry uh, holds a lot of things for you. It is up to you how you approach those things and how you know you achieve it. Nobody will come and give you you know in hand of you. So you have to definitely you have to work out. There is no other options. So, very yeah. very true very true. Parag. I still remember the day you called and told you know one afternoon that you were selected in Shell. Yes, yeah. nice. <laughs> yes. So yeah, thank you so much, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir, for your words. So, uh, should I take the questions now? Yes, sir. Okay. There is one question in chat box. Yeah, can you read out? Let me ask you to read. Uh, it says what impression it will be created when we don't know any answers and say I don't know or unable to recall. Uh, so, as I mentioned, if you are unable to recall or if you don't know the answer, it will not create a bad impression. See, if you are not able to answer five to six questions continuously or seven questions continuously, sir, I don't know, or I'm not able to recall it, or you are not able to answer it properly, then definitely it's a, not a good impression. But if in one or two questions you feel that you don't know, and if you say, sir, I don't know the answer or I'm not able to recall it, it's fine because they don't expect, uh, you know, you to know everything. You are not an expert right now. You are just, you know, uh, getting out of the college and you are go going into industry. So what is their expectation is at least you should know basics of drilling, reservoir, production, logging, testing, or be it any internships or projects that you have done. They expect at least basics you should know. If you are not able to answer basics, uh, it's uh, not a good thing, right? Because uh, see, uh, if you don't know the basics, it means you don't know about that topic in a good way. And see, uh, company will prepare you, company will train you, company will give you trainings, everything. At least if you know basics, you will be able to learn the hard part or the difficult part after coming into the industry. But if you don't know the basics also, then company also can't help you, right? It is up to you only that you should have first clarified with it and then you can. So company will help you to, you know, grow. But... Uh, preparatory part or the required things you have to be fulfilled like you should be at least knowing the basics so if you are telling it in one or two questions that you don't know the answer or you don't recall it it's fine it does not create any bad impression even i did that even i did that that i was not able to answer one of the questions so i uh, told them that sir i'm not able to recall it Yeah. Any more questions? Go ahead, guys. Yes, go ahead, Chitanshu. Chitanshu, sorry. Good morning, sir. I'm Chitanshu Mishra. Yeah, yeah. So, sir, I wanted to ask that informally i am very good at communicating like although in english but uh, when it comes to formally i lack some things so can you suggest something okay 
see uh, one good thing with you is that at least you are able to communicate right at least you are able to speak whether it is informal or formal so that is good point that you at least have have that set of words or set of sentences that is required you know to connect formally so for that as i mentioned you can prepare this kind of questions or you can prepare this kind of paragraphs by your own and then try to speak in front of the mirror or try to record yourself okay, record yourself and you will only realize or analyze that okay this is not something you know i'm doing good and try to improve in that way or try to keep a assessor in front of you who knows or you know who is an expert so that might judge you and you know tell you that you should improve it so that stage by stage you will be but yeah it is a continuous process it is not like chalo aaj uh, if i am doing it uh, on a saturday now i'll practice it on next saturday you know you have to continuously hold that thing and then and then only you will see change in yourself so that is very important in that writing Thank helps you, sometimes sometimes writing helps a lot you can see the amount of write up that i did for my answers is not you might also think that uh, when interview is very close why i am spending the time in writing you know whether i should just prepare it just let me just prepare and do the things but investing that time you know in that particular time frame helps us a lot ahead so you know invest times in you know doing the things which are required okay thank you sir welcome any more questions guys we have lot amount of time so use this time in asking your questions khush patel uh, i would request you to come uh, off mute and ask sir my was yes, yes. my question sir how to approach the company for the of campus placement okay a uh, good question that uh, you know if uh, you don't find any favorable company or uh, by something you are not placed right so how to approach company for campus placement so uh, what you can do is first and foremost thing is oil and gas industry runs on highly on contacts be let us be very frank you know it highly runs on contacts apart from camp uh, campus placement right it highly runs on the basis of contacts the connects that you have with the people that are already in the industry uh, like how to approach now see when you try to talk someone with uh, someone uh, on linkedin do not directly tell them hi sir i am looking for job job opportunity please let me know if anything is there no don't that is not a good way to start try to ask him ask them in that way that hi sir uh i you know follow i just had seen your profile and i can see you have a good amount of experience in this area so i was very curious to know you know what else is there and then try to build up you know and then try to ask sir i am like uh, i am just finishing my university uh, and i have done you know i have worked upon this 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 things in my internship so i am looking for a good role in the industry where i can be a fit you know and i am very up for it and i am open for it so try to build your conversation do not directly bang on the point that sir uh, you know if you if there is anything is there do let me know i am very uh, you know i want job anyhow do not uh, you understand what i mean right so do not try to do that so approach in a very formal way then they will be you know at, uh, interested in you that okay this guy at least know how to communicate from there you know the change starts that is the one thing then uh, first uh, again one more thing is if the company has vacancy then and then only you know you can get hired otherwise not that is also second point third thing is uh, go on the company's website and apply uh the chances of getting shortlisted by applying it through on website are very less are very less let us be very frank are very less right until and unless you have a very stand out profile or sometime it might be based on luck as well you know that we put every effort everything is right everything is correct on place right and still we are not getting selected or still our cv is not getting shortlisted then you don't have to feel disheartened you have to keep on applying you know at least one day you will be considered so do not feel disheartened in that way 
apply keep up apply on a relevant positions again now uh, anyone from us or anyone from you cannot apply for a position which requires two year two plus years of experience let's say there is a uh, vacancy for production engineer uh, you might see okay production engineer that is good you might uh, and you straight away apply before reading any job description or requirements anything you just apply don't do that that is not good right it means that anyhow you are just trying to get a job no try to read job description try to read what are the requirements what they are asking for then apply do not uh, just apply you know hepa has already so do this analysis clarify with these things and then you know apply for also keep on changing your cv when you are applying for different companies do not stick same cv everywhere you have to make changes according to the job description as i mentioned you have to change according to the objective so you know you have to make these changes and then apply okay uh, this is the thing fourth thing uh, if uh, the company has a referral uh, uh, you know option as well that if somebody is already working in a company so they can refer someone from externally let's say if somebody is there they are looking for job so if i if my company is you know having the referral option uh, they they can approach me that uh, sir i have you know gone through this position so can you refer me so if there are any referral options i will tell them okay provide me with your cv and information i'll refer you so that is a good streamline that i am referring that guy so uh, you know the recruiter or what who are the hr people or who are the recruiting managers they will directly get the, his information and his chances of getting considered are higher it does not guarantee you the placement or it does not guarantee you the job that if i am referring your job is final no referring at least helps it is a pathway that your information is you know uh, recorded in the company and then they might approach you directly from hr might directly approach you that we have received your cv we have gone through your cv so this is the fourth way first is linkedin as i mentioned you can uh, reach out to people through linkedin second is by applying on the website third is by applying uh, you know by uh, um, by the referral part as i mentioned uh, there is also an option on linkedin jobs you know there you also you can find jobs also subscribe to the emails of the companies you know career career website of the companies so that you can you know continuously get emails if there are any vacancy so that is a very good uh, you know a way to keep yourself tracked you know whether are any vacancies are coming or not so yeah these are the options that you can try out i hope that answers kush yes sir okay thanks yes diviraj go ahead hey, good afternoon sir my name is varma diviraj uh ex- actually i'm not able to hear you diviraj very good afternoon sir my name is varma yeah, yeah. diviraj yeah and sir i'm good having afternoon. a question like what is the best way to introduce in the interview like starting only uh so yeah i already given you the structure you know that uh, first try uh, first mention your name your graduation degree and your cpi if necessary if you feel that uh, it's very good then you can mention it yeah if you are a gold medalist or if you are uh, you know having a certain good position then also you can mention it and then start with as i mentioned then start with the uh, internship part right that is the most important thing start with the internship part and again as i mentioned if you are also having uh, serving as any positions like if you are chairman or president or a committee advisor or documentation head add that point also first in after you complete your introduction part like name uh, your current degree your current university mention this as well that i am also serving as documentation head at sp pdvu student chapter then mention about your internship do not describe your internship again do not start describing your internship no you just have to mention one point or two points that what it what was it all about and what how was your experience simple then mention your skills then mention what you are looking for and how you are approaching that yeah this four to five things there is no high five formula you know of introducing yourself uh, like it it is just based on how confidently you are speaking you know how confidently you are mentioning it and as i told do not mug up 
i hope that answers dibiraj yes sir. thank you welcome any more questions guys no more questions okay then uh, you know we may call off uh, this workshop here only uh, you can uh, you know reach out you can reach out to me on linkedin uh, as well as i provided my contact number so you can contact me after 7 pm uh, after my job hours um, as well as uh, you know i'll share this material to uh, the host chapter and then they will you know circulate this to you uh, yeah and all the very best yeah thank you yeah thank you sir for wonderful presentation and session and thank you for sparing time for us to share your knowledge regarding the hiring process and i am hopeful that the insights shared by you during both yesterday and today's workshop will significantly enhance our chances for excelling in job or internship opportunities and and securing a position and i would i would also like to extend my gratitude to all the attendees for dedicating their time to grasp valuable ideas and strategies from the sessions so that's the end for the workshop but for us an opportunity to embark on a new journey towards mastering the art of acing the hiring process so thank you guys for joining thank you sir thank you everyone see you again you know uh, somewhere down the lane okay bye everyone bye sir